I want to begin reading at verse 3. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. I, I want to talk about God's missing children. It's that problem that never seems to go away. It's every parent's worst nightmare pain and problem of missing children. As we emerge from the grips of COVID, we look around every Sunday to see that God has some missing children. You know, when Jesus walked this earth, he experienced more trouble from the religious establishment than he did from sinners. Amen. One of the things that likens me unto my Lord is that the same people that gave him trouble are the same people that tends to give me trouble. Church people. church folk of his day were murmuring amongst themselves that he can't be who and all he claims to be for the very fact that he hangs out with the wrong crowd. If he is who he claims to be. And all that he claims to be, surely he wouldn't be hanging out with that crowd. He would be a part of us. This man receives sinners. And that word receive in the Greek literally means he allows them access to himself. And in response to his critics, Jesus gives us what Charles Dickens called the greatest short story ever written. Luke chapter 15. The early church fathers believed that Luke 15 was not three parables, but one parable with three movements. It is this first movement that claims our attention as a text today. Jesus says that a shepherd has a hundred sheep. He loses one. He discovers that one is missing. And he leaves the 99 in the wilderness. And he goes searching for that one lost sheep. He searches until he finds it. And when he finds it, he lifts it, lays it on his shoulders, 
and comes home rejoicing. He gets home and he begins to call neighbors and friends to come and rejoice with me. And then Jesus takes this story and lifts it from an earthly realm to a heavenly realm and says, likewise, there's joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons who needs no repentance. That's the story. Now let's start over. See what the Lord is saying to us today. How did he know that there was one missing? Reason would suggest he counted them. You, you can't have a hundred sheep and just look out there and say, Old Blue is missing. <laughs> so reason would suggest he took time and he counted them. He comes up with 99 and he knows he has 100. Perhaps he, re he counted and he counted until he was convinced there's one that's missing. Or could it be that the one that was missing had some special affliction? It limped. It was scarred. Its vision was blurred. And he looked out and saw that that afflicted sheep was not there. Only to remind us, brothers and sisters, we, we, we serve a concerned creator. He's so concerned about us that the Bible says he knows the number of hairs that are on our head. And if you don't have any hair, he knew where it used to be. All I'm trying to tell you is that God knows you by your hurts and he knows you by your pains and he knows you by your wounds and he knows you by your scars. Or was it that he knew the sheep by name? Jesus says in John chapter 10 that the shepherd knows his sheep by name. He, he calls them by name and they follow him because they know his voice and a stranger they will not follow because they don't know the stranger's voice. He, he knows them personally and he knows them intimately that he knows them by name. William Barclay in his commentary on John chapter 10 tells the story of walking through a large pasture in Northern Ireland. He says, the pasture was so large, on one end was a shepherd with a flock of sheep, and on the other end was another shepherd with a flock of sheep. And he says, suddenly a storm blew in. And to his surprise, both shepherds took their sheep into the same cave. And he noticed as they were all going in that they had not all been branded. They didn't all wear collars or tags in their ears. And he decided to stay around to see once the storm was over, how the shepherds would go about to separate their sheep. He says, as suddenly as that storm blew in, it blew out. The sun was shining again. And from that cave emerged one shepherd. Walk to the other end and began calling his sheep by name. And he says, one by one, they trotted out to meet their shepherd because the shepherd knew his sheep by name. He said, but then it dawned on him 
that there was the great possibility that other shepherd had sheep in that cave with the same name. And he realized it wasn't just that the shepherd knew his sheep by name, but the sheep knew the shepherd's voice. And brothers and sisters, a great problem with the church is that it's filled with a whole lot of folk who don't know the shepherd's voice. They fall in behind every Johnny come lately that comes along. We, God doesn't know us by numbers. He knows us by name. That's, that's good news. That he knows me by name. Do you realize that you're known more by number than you are by your own name? The government doesn't give you a name. They assign you a social security number. If you call about your credit card number, Bill, they don't ask for your name. They want the number first. You call the utility company. They, they want a number first. But God takes time to know his children by name. Census taker was up in the hills of West Virginia. Came upon this house. Lady was sitting on the front porch in a rocking chair. He walks up, says, is this such and such an address? She said, yeah. You such and such a person? Yeah. And he got around to ask, how many children do you have? She says, well, that's Jane, and Betty Jo, and Bob. He says, wait a minute. I don't need their names. I just need a number. She looked at him and said, sir, I don't give them numbers. I give them names. If you don't have anything to shout about today, let me give you a shout. God knows you by your name. And again, that may not appear to be much to you, but it's all going to come down to one thing. When this life is over. When the light of your life has gone out like a flickering candle in a winter's night. When it's over down here, will you hear your name called or will your number just be up? I thank God he knows my name. Well, how did the sheep get lost? How did it come up missing? Let me say to you that, that, that sheep are not strong, they're not swift or smart. That's why they need a shepherd. They are dumb, defenseless, and have no sense of direction. They need a shepherd. Now, for all you smart people, you ever thought about the fact that all that was at God's disposal to liken his relationship to with his people, he likens it to a shepherd and a sheepfold to remind you you're not as smart as you think you are. You're not as independent as you think you are. Sheep need a shepherd. 
And could it be that this one that was missing simply began nibbling on blades of grass at the end of the pasture? It just kept nibbling and nibbling and nibbling until well, finally when it looked up, it was out of sight and sound of the shepherd and the foe. You know, sheep are easily led astray. Part of it is because sheep always keep their heads down. They seldom ever look up. Because all they're really interested in is the next blade of grass to try to satisfy the flesh. So, so here's the real question. Why do we nibble? Why do we run the risk of becoming missing children? Brothers and sisters, for some strange reason, the grass always looks greener on the other side. Amen. Can't say that, say hey, man. And often, in order to get what we want, we have to give up what we already had. I, uh, y y y years ago, I, I heard this story about a, uh, a bull that was in a pasture. Only bull in the pasture. Only bull in the pasture. And he had two heifers in there with him. That's a female cow. I'm not talking about anybody in here that's a female cow. <laughs> Only bull in the cash, pasture. Two heifers in there with him. And he's knee deep in alfalfa grass. That's about as good as it, as it gets for, for a bull. But on the other side of the fence was another cow. And he just got to watching that other cow. Lost interest in the two heifers he had. Lost his appetite. And when he couldn't take it any longer, he, he, he backed up, started running, got up a gate, and when he got to the fence, he leaped. And he cleared it for the exception of one of his back hoofs got caught on that top strand of barbed wire. But he did manage to tumble over to the other side. There he is. Hoof lacerated. Blooded, bleeding. But he was finally where he wanted to be. But he created such a commotion trying to get to the other side that he excited the other cow. And the other cow broke and ran, and when it did, he discovered the other cow was a bull just like him. Had what he wanted. But he lost what he already had. Statistics reveal that children who come up missing five and under, about 75% of the time was lured by someone offering them candy. But brothers and sisters, God has some missing children because of their sweet tooth. They, they, they go after that which appears to be sweet, but it ends up in bitterness. We get caught up in situations we can't handle or get out of. Amen. You, you can't flirt with sin. So what are you nimbling on? What keeps you at the edge 
and not in the center of the will of God. What are you nibbling on? What keeps you from being all God wants you to be and having all God wants you to have and doing all God wants you to do? What are you nibbling on? Or could it be that this one that was missing had experienced a fall? Because there are some falls we experience in life we can get up from under our own power. But then, brothers and sisters, there are other falls. That the only way you'll ever stand up on your feet again is that the shepherd himself must find you and lift you. Lift you. Now, finally, why was it missing? Why was it missing? Well, it was missing because it was missed. Had it not been missed, it never would have been missing. Have you noticed some folk can be out of church a month and nobody ever knows that they're not there? And then there are other folk, if they get to church late, you start looking and wondering what's happened, where are they? Is something wrong? Because when you're missed, it says your presence makes a difference. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know that if your presence doesn't matter with anyone else, it matters much with God. So why was it missed? It was missed because it was love. Had it not been love, it never would have been missed. Had it not been missed, it never would have been missing. It, it, it was missed because it was love. We label this 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke as a great, this chapter as being about being lost. Lost sheep, lost coin, lost son. But it's not. It's about God's love for the lost. Luke chapter 15 is one of the greatest love chapters in the Bible and the word love is never mentioned. Think about it. You have a hundred sheep and you lose one. That shepherd had only suffered a 1% loss. There's no one in business who would have a problem with only suffering a 1% loss in inventory. Look, you count, whatever you do, call. One's gone, okay. Let's go on. But the shepherd... Because of his love, leaves the 99 and he goes searching for that one lost sheep. The good news is that because of his love, God doesn't play percentages. He's concerned about that one that's lost. That one that's missing is valuable to God. Here is the good news. Because of his love, 99% is a failing grade with God. That, that he would leave the 99, and he goes searching for that one lost sheep. The 
this article appeared in a lost and found section of a newspaper. The article said, lost dog. Crippled in front paw. Blind in his left eye. Mange on his neck and back. Tail missing. And he answers to the name Lucky. <laughs> Crippled in his front paw, blind in his left eye. Mange on his neck and his back and his tail was missing and he answered to the name Lucky come a little closer if any dog deserved to be called Lucky it was this dog because in spite of all that was wrong with him somebody loved him enough and still wanted him you don't know when to shout that's the good news of the gospel that in spite of all that was wrong with us God loves us enough that he still wants us. And that's why that's why the shepherd leaves the 99 and he goes searching for that one lost sheep. Have I got a witness? Jesus says he searches until he finds it. Yes, Lord, uh, and uh, when he finds it, Jesus said uh, he lifts it. Yes, Lord, uh, and lays it on his shoulder. And I thank God uh, because of his love. He uh, in the lifting business. That's why we sing, uh, I was sinking uh, deep in sin, far uh, from the peaceful shore, very deeply uh, stained within. I was sinking uh, to rise no more, but I thank God uh, the master uh, of the sea. He heard uh, my despairing cry, and from the waters uh, he lifted me. Now, safe am I? Have I got a witness? Anybody here don't mind testifying? Love lifted me. Have I got a witness when nothing else could him? God's love lifted me. Yes, Lord. Jesus said he lifts it, lays it on his shoulders and carries it all the way back home. Have I got a witness? Because of his love, he's not just in the lifting business, but I thank God he's in the carrying business. Have I got a witness? Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but whatever it is, he's able to carry you through. There ought to be a few witnesses in here that can testify when I couldn't go any further. He picked me up and he carried me. Have I got a witness? And now you're on the other side and you stand and sit in church as though you brought yourself. But anybody here don't mind testifying. He carried you through unemployment. He carried you through a bad marriage. He carried you through a broken relationship. He carried you through 
through sickness. He carried you through sorrow. He carried you through your pain. Have I got a witness? You ought to have a hallelujah in your mouth. You ought to have a praise down in your heart because he's able to carry you through. Have I got a witness? I thank God when I was down, he picked me up. I thank God when I couldn't make it, he carried me. Have I got a witness? All I'm trying to tell you is that had you been the only sin in the world, God still would have given his son and the son would have died just for you help me encourage somebody tell them child he's a busy God but he's still God of the one started the human family with one named Adam preserved the human family with one named Noah started a nation with one named Abraham continued that nation with one named Isaac blessed that nation with one named Jacob liberated that nation with one named Moses and when he got ready to save the whole world he didn't get a committee he didn't even get a board but just one man died at Calvary and his name is Jesus anybody here know he died he died till the sun refused to shine he died till the whole world began to reel and rock he died till centurion cried out surely 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 this was the son of god but i'm so glad cried sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand. Thank God for the shepherd. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the shepherd. Thank God that he searches. Thank God that he saves. But brothers and sisters, the last picture we have of the shepherd, you know what he's doing? He's shouting. He's shouting. He puts that sheep on his shoulder and shouts all the way home. And it's a Holy Ghost party. And a Holy Ghost party don't stop because when he got back home, he start calling folk to come and rejoice with me. You know what's amazing? The Lord shouted when he saved you. And you haven't shouted since you've been saved. Anybody here know you've been born again? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let it that have breath praise his name bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his name anybody here know you've been born again can you get on your feet lift up your hands and open up your mouth and praise him right now Shout right now, shout right now, praise him right now. Now look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, you may not have anything to 
praise him for. But neighbor, I'm going to ask you to shout with me, praise him with me. He's been just that good. He's made a way. He's brought me out. He's healed my body. He's brought my children back home. Tell them, neighbor, shout with me. Don't leave me hanging. Praise him with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Can you say yes? Yes. Yes. Can you praise him? Can you praise him? 